cosmos is the entirety, the whole of everything, from the vastness of the universe to the most minute of everything. It's about space, time and all creation. Where is God in all this? The response, your response to this, will depend on your cosmology because everyone has a cosmology, that is, an implicit understanding of where we are in relation to the vastness of space, time and all of creation. With technology, we now have new eyes to see into space, into the cosmos, and this moves us from an anthropocentric attitude to one that makes us more humble, a more healthy relationship with the rest of all of creation. From childhood, I had uh, the experience in rural Victoria of wondering and enjoying the night skies I love to go out and look at the moon and the stars, the myriad stars in the wide open spaces, and wonder about them. I guess I wondered also where God was in all this. I guess I thought that God was a bearded old man somewhere out in amongst all those stars. And I realised later that that image of God came from the scripture that was written by the ancients where their cosmology one was one that was fixed and static. My image of God as a child, that literalist image, also was influenced by dualism, the separation of matter and spirit that had come through in Christianity. That literalist image of God and the dualism is still there. But that's, that cosmology, that image of God, doesn't relate in the 21st century. We now know the origin of the universe. We know how stars began. We're able to observe now, through technology, the birth and the death of stars. We know there are galaxies myriad galaxies out there. We know about our own galaxy, the Milky Way. We're able to explore now the vastness of even our solar system. We can see where it is. So we know that the universe now, through with the eyes of technology, we know that the cosmos is vast, the universe is expanding, it is dynamic and it is interconnected. We also know that humans have emerged from at least a 14 billion year history or story and that we are the most recent, that we've been here a mere 200,000 years. We know from technology that the elements that were present at the origin of the universe in the formation of the stars are also present in us, that we are in fact made from stardust. Medieval scholar Bonaventure wrote and recognised that God revealed God's self in two books, first the book of nature and then the book of scripture. The ancient scripture writers knew this so when we reflect on Proverbs 8, 22 to 31, and we read it with a 21st century cosmology, we see that God is present at the very beginning of creation, in the beginning of evolution. We read in Proverbs, or we hear in Proverbs, the feminine voice of wisdom as part of the process of the unfolding, evolving universe. We hear the voice of wisdom rejoicing in each aspect of the evolving creation. 
and in life on earth. We recognise and hear that there is delight in the wisdom that underpins the processes of the evolution of the aspects of life. We appreciate that God is there present from the beginning of the story of evolution and in its ongoingness as each new phase emerges and life evolves. We, we reflect in Proverbs on God present there is in all of this, blessing and rejoicing in life. Our response then is one of praise for God in all life, in all creation. So in Psalm 148, we praise God in gratitude, praise you sun and moon, praise the stars, praise the highest heavens. So we, we have an attitude of gratitude and respect for the way evolution and creation work together, for the interconnectedness, for the complexity of the interaction of all these phases of life from the very beginning and we appreciate the interdependence of all these elements of creation. So then when we look at St Paul writing in Colossians 1, 15 to 20, we hear Paul teaching us that Christ is the firstborn of creation. Christ is the fullness of God and that life was created for Christ and with Christ. And through Christ, God reconciles all life. Australian theologian Dennis Edwards teaches us that the emergence of the universe is the expression of the creative word of God. That evolution occurs only through the eternal word. So the human story is the story of the cosmos becoming self-aware, conscious of, its, of itself in the rest of all of creation. And that humanity, the humankind, has choice. Humanity is free to collaborate with God's creative processes or has the choice to be destructive. In John 6, 41 to 51, we hear John teaching of Jesus Christ as the incarnation. Jesus came into the world and Jesus is the word become flesh. If we really think about this, then we reflect that God became matter, part of the matter of universe. So we are in the universe and the universe is in all. So Jesus of Nazareth was made up of this matter. Bonaventure again from the Middle Ages reflected that the two books, the Book of Nature and the Book of Scripture, became one book in Jesus Christ, in his divinity and in his humanity. Dennis Edwards writes that the incarnation is God embracing this created world eternally. Jesus was born, lived, suffered, died and is risen. In Jesus Christ, God brings healing and hope to all humans. 
But then in Paul, Paul teaches that this healing and hope embraces not just humans but all creation. We know that the universe is still evolving. It is evolving towards a wholeness, a complex wholeness, a coming into being. A 21st century cosmology offers Christians a challenge. It offers us a challenge of the meaning of Christ Jesus for the restoration of all things in Christ. That restoration began, came to being in Jesus Christ and continues to come to being to fulfilment for all created beings. Dennis Edwards again writes that the cosmos story and the human story are one story. Humans are the conscious part of cos the cosmos. If you like, the cosmos come to self-awareness and we remain profoundly interconnected with rainforests, with birds, with insects, with quarks, with the wind, mountains, and the Milky Way. So this poses questions. How does a 21st century cosmology influence your image of God? How does God become incarnate in the world? Or what does God become incarnate in the world mean for all of creation? Does this change the way you think about Jesus Christ? What does it mean for the role of humans in the world when we see our actions in planet Earth, our only home. <laughs>